What's up, YouTube? It is your boy, JB, and we are here for the season premiere of The Haves and the Have Nots. This is season eight, episode 10. The episode is titled A Game of Chess, you guys. So this is the final few episodes of season eight, you guys. So before we get into that, if you guys are watching this video or any of the other videos on my channel, you guys are not already subscribed to the channel, then do me a favor and hit that subscribe button. Like, what are we doing? Like, why are we still going out on dates and you are sticking me with the bill at the end of the day? Do me a favor and hit that subscribe button, hit the notification bell button so that way you guys are notified when I drop any videos and hit that like button for the algorithm. Now, with that all being said, let's go ahead and just jump into this episode review, shall we? All right, you guys, so this episode, we pick up where we last left off and you guys remember in the season finale that happened earlier this year, Justin set himself Justin set himself on fire. So we pick up with Justin on fire. And in the melee of him setting himself on fire, he tried to grab Jeffrey, but he did actually he didn't try to grab Jeffrey. He actually did grab Jeffrey, but somehow he got he let go of Jeffrey and he's just on the ground burning to a crisp. He looked like Michael Myers on what Halloween was that where he burned? Halloween Resurrection. If you guys watch remember Halloween Resurrection. Michael Myers got burnt. Actually, Michael got burnt in two Halloweens. Michael got burnt in that Halloween, Halloween Resurrection, and he also got burned in Halloween 2. But yeah, he looked like Michael on Halloween Resurrection. So then everybody's just standing. I'm like, the dude is on fire. Like, ain't nobody gonna put him out. And just Madison had to say something, and then the guy went and got a fire extinguisher. Then he asked him if he had some gloves so he could check his pulse. He checked his pulse, but he couldn't feel anything. So then he's telling people to call the cop, call an ambulance. And I'm just like, so y'all just don't. First of all, y'all sat there. Y'all was sitting there when he came out with that gun. And I'm, I'm assuming, I mean, he had something flam. He had something on. Kerosene, gasoline, lighter fluid. He had something. Because the way he just engulfed in flames, he had something on that, you know, But at this point, when the paramedics get there, Justin is officially dead. Well, they didn't actually they didn't pronounce him dead, but he's dead. So then uh, Jeffrey starts playing his what if game, and, and Madison tells him, "Don't do that." Which yeah, don't do that. But you know, Jeffrey's like, "But you know, my mom this and my mom that," which we all know Veronica had a hand to play in this, getting him beat up in jail. You know, getting getting him raped, getting him beat up. We all know. Veronica did this. <laughs> so then Jeffrey tells Madison that he can't see him anymore because Veronica will come after him. And I'm going to be honest with you guys, they had a very long dialogue. So I'm just going to shorten it down for you guys. Jeffrey wants to let Madison go because he doesn't want Veronica to come after Jeffrey, after Madison. Madison says, don't worry about your mom. Let's, you know, f just fight. Like, I want to see where this, I want to explore this. I want to see where this can go. And that was just the gist of it. They kept one back and forth with that. I'm not. So then they go back to Madison's place. So Jeffrey tries to call um, Justin's, Justin's mother. She doesn't answer the phone. Hmm. Never mind. So Jeffrey wants to go home to, you know, be with, be around his dad. Madison says, stay here. Jeffrey says, no, I need to go home. Madison once again tells him to stay. Then Kobe comes in and Kobe was like, what's that smell? It smells like barbecue. And Madison's like, not now, Kobe. So then when Jeffrey went to the bathroom, he, you know, uh, Madison told him everything that, you know, Justin set himself on fire and Justin is dead at this point. So, <laughs> and Kobe was like, he had a date. So he was like, I, I can stay here if you want me to. And Madison was like, nah, you just go on your date. And then, um, you know, when he walks out, he tells uh, Jeffrey, sorry about your friend. Sorry that the bitch set us up on fire, you know, extra crispy. And, you know, um, Matt is like, cut it out, cut it out. I'm like, oh, he's telling the truth. So then the next morning, we see Madison, he's coming back and he's brought Jeffrey breakfast. So Jeffrey says, well, I need to get home. And Madison's like, well, I'll take you home. Once again, it's the whole thing of Veronica this, Veronica that. 
Jeffrey, be yourself. Like Madison said, don't worry about Veronica. I mean, you know what actually you have work. Well, nah. All right, guys, let's wrap let's up. Move. Let me wrap up Justin, Jeffrey, everybody in one whole swoop. So, when just when Jeffrey was calling Justin's mom, now see, this is why I made a face a few minutes ago, if you guys noticed. I made a face because Pearl, who is Justin's mom, she said that Jeffrey called her and left a voicemail for her, saying that he needs to talk to her in person. But see, in that scene with just Jeffrey, he was just calling her and he was like, why is she not answering? I never got the impression that he left a voicemail for the woman, but hey, if they say he left a voicemail, he left a voicemail for her. So David calls Jeffrey to see where Jeffrey is and Jeffrey says he's two minutes away from the house. So then Miss Pearl, who's homophobic, she wants to blame Jeffrey for the things that Justin did. I'm like, uh, no ma'am, your son lied. Your son lied like an mf -er. And David told her what happened with Jeffrey and Justin, that Justin pulled him over, arrested him, and molested him in, in, in the backseat of his, his squad car. Have you not talked to your other son? The one that I think is secretly gay as well. Like, I really think Tanner is secretly gay. Like, because for me, I just don't understand Tanner and his fascination with Justin having sex with a man unless he wants to have sex with his own, wanted to have sex with his brother. That would be the only thing that I could come up with when it comes to Tanner. Because Tanner never made sense to me whatsoever. So then, as Miss Pearl is getting ready to leave, she's talking about she needs to leave before, or before she gets caught in a drive by. I'm like, you racist bitch. Forgive me for saying that, but I was like, you old racist ass woman. Then she's talking about some voodoo. I'm like, oh, you really racist. You ain't even hiding your racism at this point. But Madison and Jeffrey then eventually tell the, the racist woman that her son is dead. She didn't believe it. She wanted to call him. Girl, your son is crispy. Your son is like a like some, you know, some charred barbecue. Your son is, yeah, your son is dead. You can't say it no other way, but your son is D-E-A-D. -E so then let's move over to Mitch. So here's another scene where we had a lot of back and forth dialogue. Mitch. Mitch went over to... I'm sorry, you guys. I'm, I just shaved my, my head and the hair is on my back and it's really itching. Sorry. Might be a little bit too much information for y'all, but I'm sorry. It's bothering the crap out of me. So yeah, Mitch... He went over to um, the criers. He's looking for Jim. He runs into Hannah. Hannah's kind of short with him at first. Then she asked him, like, what are you doing here, Mitch? He says, I'm on business. She said, is it a family business? He's like, what do you mean? And then she tells, she, you know, she's talking to him about, you know, the fact that um, him saying that Candace and Benny are protected by his family, which we all know that that's kind of, a, I mean, we know Mitch it's so interesting when it comes to Mitch. Mitch uses his family's name a lot when he wants to scare people, but he doesn't want to be a part of the family business. As bad as I talk about Sandy, Mitch ain't no better. Mitch is just a smidge better than Sandy because he's not racist. So then, you know, Hannah leaves. She said, when I come back, I don't want to see you here. I'm like, oh, Hannah, 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 Hannah. You getting bold with everybody, ain't you? So then the piece of shit himself, Jim, comes out and Mitch, in, you know, Mitch wants to talk to him. So Mitch asks Jim, has he talked to his family? Then Jim starts playing a whole game of semantics with Mitch. And the whole time they, they, they were talking, I'm like, Mitch, just square up and punch him in his face. Because he only got one good arm, which I'm still confused about this arm with Jim. Jim, you got shot right up here. It was a flesh wound. Why are you still wearing this sling? You ain't hurt. But I guess Jim wants to milk it for all it's worth. Because Jim, you ain't hurt. Like, I just want to miss just to square up with that bitch and just punch, it, punch him right and smack dead in his face. Or hit him in the chest. And just hit him some, just hit him somewhere hard to knock the cell out of his wins. That's all I wanted Mitch to do. All I wanted him to do. But like I said, Mitch is playing, not Mitch, Jim is playing a game of semantics with Mitch at that point. And... I don't know who got the best of who, to be honest with you. Don't know. But it was, a, it was a lot of repetitiveness with Mitch and Jim, and I'm not gonna repeat it. So once Mitch leaves, 
Jim calls David. He tells him about what happened with Mitch. And David says, don't push it. That is correct. Don't push that. And then the issue with Jim is Jim has an issue that two black women have money and more specifically the money he wants. That's what Jim's problem is. That's all that's wrong with Mr. Well, no, no, we ain't calling him that. Racist Jim, that's all that's wrong with him. But let's all move right. on, guys. Next up, Conley, Charles, and Landon. This is a storyline that needs to hurry up and wrap up because I'm still sick of seeing all three of them. All three of them. And that's literally what my note says. Conley and Charles, we really need to wrap up this storyline. So Conley is talking to Charles about his cabinet. And Charles is like, you know, I just had a meeting. I don't really want to talk about that right now. Can we table this discussion? So then Landon comes in and Landon is talking to him and he's telling him he doesn't trust him. He has a gut feeling that he's up to no good. You know, he's he's always talking about Candace and he just feels that, um, yeah, he's no good. So Charles says, you know what, when you have intel on him, come to me. But as right now, with it being a gut, don't want to hear about it. You know something that I was, so I was watching this. I know the special that they had on tonight. It actually came on on the 18th and I did watch some of it. It's so funny listening to Peter Paros talk. When he talks, his, his, his real speaking voice is nothing like the Dave, like what he does when he does David. David has such a deep voice, but when Peter talks, his voice is a little softer. I'm like, oh my God, he has a soft voice. I would have never guessed it. Um, where are we at now? Wyatt, Wyatt, Wyatt. So Wyatt is still in the hospital. Wyatt is still trying to get some drugs. So the nurse comes in and he's flirting with the nurse. He's telling her how beautiful she is and, you know, everything. And like I said, putting it on thick because he has to pee. So she was like, well, you know, there's a there is a bedpan right there. And there is one of those little cups that you can pee in. He was like, but I want to go to the restroom. He's like, I, you know, you can leave me handcuffed and I just go to the bathroom and you can watch. <laughs> I'm like, why? Whatever. Then he asked her for some pain pills. She says, you're not getting any pain. He says, I'm in pain. She says, you're not in any pain. He says, I cut my wrist. She said, they're, they're not that deep. You didn't go deep enough to hurt yourself. Wyatt and his father are the same person. Literally, they're the same fucking person. No ifs, ands, or buts about it. Then when she leaves, he I mean, he tells her to leave. And that's when he starts berating her, calling her a bitch and all that stuff. I'm like, oh, you're definitely your father. So then... The episode, we ended it. It was amazing to me. I enjoyed the ending. So Catherine calls Hannah and, you know, she asks Hannah how she, how is everything? And she tells her, you know, she met up with the, um, her people and they had a lot of questions. And Hannah, you know, Catherine told her, don't worry about it. You know, I know when I first started doing, dealing with this stuff, it was a lot. It was a lot of word jargon. Just bring it to me and I'll look it over. She says, okay. So then she asked her, can you go to the hospital and check on Wyatt as well? She says, yeah, and I'll do that. And then she says, also tell Jim that I sold Wyatt's um, lot. Although I didn't sell it. I have a guy that's standing there. She's like, a guy? She's like, yes. She says, then also, can you go over there to him and tell him that I'm okay, you know, and I'm in jail, and can he come visit me? And Hannah says, okay, we'll do that. So after Hannah hangs up the phone with her, in walks the devil, Veronica. And Veronica's looking for Jim. She says, I don't know where Jim is. She says, okay, well, I'll sit here and wait for him. She says, no, you're not going to wait for him because I'm getting ready to <laughs> leave. I don't know if Veronica thinks she, what kind of, I don't know what kind of black person Veronica thinks she is. I, I guess Veronica don't think she black. I don't know what Veronica is. The line that took me out was when Hannah, because so Veronica was like, she's going to stay there. And Hannah says, no, you're not. And Veronica was going up the stairs. She says, Veronica, come down the stairs. Veronica, come down the stairs. Don't make me come up there. Veronica, Veronica, Hannah, Veronica, Hannah, Veronica. It was a back and forth. But that was a good, that was a back and forth that I can tolerate. 
And then she says, I'll mop the floor with your ass. <laughs> and then she talked about that wig on her head. Oh, God. I don't know. Because <laughs> she told her she had a broom on top of her head. Talking about her wig. Now I know Tyler Perry wrote that into the script. And that actually, well, I'm going to be honest with you, that was funny. I don't know if he was shading himself in his wig department. Because that wig was bad. And not in a good way. So Veronica went up the stairs and she's going through um, the dressers. Hannah follows her behind her, stop going through them dressers. I'm like, Hannah, stop telling this woman what to do and be, be about it, Hannah. Like, I don't want you to beat her ass. Like, go over there, grab that wig, pull her, punch her, like, just hit her. Like, knock the fuck out of her. That's all I was saying. Like, Hannah, just knock the fuck out of her. Knock the out of Veronica. That's all I'm saying. Punch her, scratch her, you know, claw at the, like, do something to her. Just knock the fuck out of her. Like, that's all I'm saying. Knock her ass out. Knock her out. So, Hannah calls the police on her. And Veronica's like, you gonna call the police on another black woman? And I'm thinking to myself, oh, now you know you're a black woman. You want to use your education to come down on this woman. Okay. Because that's what she was doing downstairs. Um... Because she was talking about there was a plant, the house was a plantation. What else? So she called the police, and then Veronica was still open. She said, Veronica, open another drawer. Another drawer is open, Hannah. <laughs> it was hilarious to me, you guys. I cracked up. So when they hung up the phone, Hannah got in front of the dresser, and Veronica went to open up one, and Hannah slammed it on her hand. She says, Bitch. And they started fighting. She said, oh, I got your bitch. Pop, pop, pop. It was just a lot of hitting. Now, in the scene for next week's episode, you look at Veronica's face. Nothing. I mean, did they really have a fight? Because Veronica looked unscathed. I wonder what Hannah looks like. I hope Hannah looks the same as well. But, I mean, Hannah was giving, throwing them hands, throwing them haymakers at Veronica for me. I mean, she was throwing them at her. Like, come on, Hannah. Beat that ass. But you guys, that was the episode. I enjoyed it. I definitely, if you guys cannot tell, I definitely enjoyed the ending of the episode. It was what I was looking for. Hannah versus Veronica. Anybody versus Veronica, I'm here for. But yeah, you guys, that's the episode review. Please let, please like this video. Leave your comments in the comment section below and subscribe to the channel. And hit the notification bell button so you guys are aware of when I drop anything else. And share this video. And until the next time, you guys, stay safe out there. Take care of yourselves. Remember, wash your hands, wear your mask, and if you choose not to wear a mask, be safe in whatever you do. And be blessed, you guys. And until the next one, I will see you guys later. Bye, guys. When does um, Sisters come back? Is that, next, is that next week that Sisters come back? I think it's next Wednesday. Leave that in the comment section. I believe it's next Wednesday. But I'll see you guys later for Real Housewives of New York City if you guys watch that. All right, you guys. I'm off.